Well, hello, 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 and good evening. It's me. I'm hoping you know me by now. It's Joy. Joy Ruffin coming to you from the Sunshine State, Florida. It's Wednesday, Wednesday night. It's leading ladies, leading legacies, living legacies. And tonight, my friend, oh my, 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 don't we always bring you phenomenal, fantastic ladies, great guests. Tonight is no exception. We have with us a body language certified expert. I can hardly wait to bring her over and to have her tell you how she came to this, why she loves it and all of that. But let me tell you a little bit about her. Judy Sandweiss has spent over 15 years developing business leaders, driving organizational effectiveness and accelerating employee performance within multinational organizations. I could go on and on and tell you a lot more about her, but if you're like me, you're waiting to see her and to hear more about her from her own lips and how she came to the study of the body, the body language, because it is fascinating. You have to love it. So help me to say hello and to welcome Judy. Judy, hello and welcome. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. You're no more excited than I am. If you're good at body language, this is not acting. This is for real. <laughs> I am thrilled. I, I said in the preamble before we come on, and I mentioned it to you very briefly, that I'm like a kid off to preschool because I'm fascinated with body language. I have several friends, another one, which we'll talk about a little bit later, who is very interested in body language as well. So tell us, I gave them just a teaser about your background, but tell us how you came to love the study and the business of body language. Well, let me start way back from the beginning. Yes. So really, it starts as a child. I am the youngest of four, four girls, and our father is a psychiatrist. So <laughs> I, I grew up fascinated about people and people's behavior and experiencing different types of people and un seeking to understand people. Yes. So I went, I went into the field of human resources. I, I got a, a master's degree in um, industrial, and industrial and labor relations. And I went into human resources and I did all sorts of work with um, employees and managers and leaders. And most recently, what I realized is that we are all operating from the neck up. We are in our heads all the time. It's almost like we are disembodied and we are trying to solve problems from our heads. And there is so much wisdom with our whole, in our whole body. Yes. And so I stumbled upon um, Vanessa Van Edwards, who is a body language uh, expert, trainer, author. And she, she was doing an interview and I was fascinated and I immediately went, found out more and I went and studied with her. I absolutely love it because it's really about emotional intelligence. Listen, I love the word stumble upon because I can't remember verbatim, but how often have you heard? We plan, we strategize, we organize, we get our ducks in order, and yet something happens and we're off on another track, on another road, going where we really were meant to go. So before you go any further, how did you stumble upon this lady that you mentioned? I was really stressed out at work because the workplace is getting, it's very stressful in some environments. Yes, it is. It's a, the most recent organization, highly technical, and everyone's in their heads, and, there's, and they're trying to solve problems from the heads instead of the heart and the body. And so I was listening to a lot of podcasts, and yeah. really it was through like a podcast interview show. And as soon as I heard her speaking, I was like, I'm hooked. You knew. And it wasn't until months later that I re I'm, I'm even fully realizing how much richness there is with body language. Because uh, it's more than just making eye contact or shaking a person's hands. It's way, way more. It's about our self-awareness, awareness of my emotions, awareness, body awareness. Where am I hurting in my body and how is that showing up in my body language? Then how am I managing my body? Like, so there's, that's just one element, right? Yes. Well, Judy, you mentioned a word, we talked briefly, and it's one of my favorites because I get it. And that's how we build our emotional intelligence yes. and how that's connected to 
our body language. So yeah. speak, because that ties in with competence. Oh. Aren't we all searching for more of that? Speak to that a wee bit. So, so there's something called fake it until you become it. Yes, yes, yes. We've all heard that. So oftentimes, you know, what we feel on the inside oozes or like leaks out to the outside. We're broadcasting it. We we don't even realize we're always broadcasting it. So out there. Oh, I love that. I love that because that is so true. You and I are going at it from different angles, but that first impression and how you appear in your presence, it speaks before you do. So go yeah. more with that. Yes, yes, I get it. Oh my gosh, it speaks. So if we are feeling down and sad, it and we just go, we we don't think, we don't center ourselves and become aware of how we're presenting ourselves, we're gonna come off as being down and sad and it, it and those emotions are contagious. But if we wanna be, if we are aware of how we're feeling, we can actually shift into um, a different sort of energy. Yes. And there's, so the way I learned body language is much of it is research-based. So that's based on research studies. It's not just anecdotal. Right. So when you actually are more expansive in your body, put posture, more, more oxygen is coming into your, into your lungs. It's oxygenating your body. You start to feel more powerful, more confident, and you project that. So there's someone named Amy Cuddy who did a very famous TED Talk. It's called, um, well, she's written a book called Presence. Yes. And she talked about, about power posing to create um, that feeling of, of, of power before you go on stage, before you give a talk, before you go on a date, before you do anything in order to get you into a more powerful like presence. Powerful, not necessarily in a powerful, but in a confident way. Let me, let me say this to you, because you see, we're so in sync here, it's amazing. I'm just blown away because just the other day, someone said to me, looking upon another person who had just given a speech, she said, what amazing presence she has. So speak a little bit about presence, which you just spoke to, but that ties into being able to be confident, assured, and have that emotional intelligence that zooms out. So many studies show that the first impression is made within seconds before a person starts speaking. Mm. There are so many studies I could cite, but suffice it to say, we make an impression by our beingness and how we present ourselves. So it's your posture, it's your gestures, it's the um, facial expression, smiling, yeah. um, grimacing, um, it's the colors of the, the clothes, the style of clothes, the colors we wear, the vocal tone, the, the pace at which we speak, the, whether we, we use the question inflection or if we speak with more confident assuredness, there's, and the energy we project, there's just, there's just so much that goes into it before we even actually, before you even think about what the words someone is saying, it's all of those other things that are making over 50% of the impression that people have of you. That's fascinating. And I tell you why, for so many reasons. Today, more than ever, we have gone to be, to become a very, very, very casual society. Yes. And that sense of casualness for many takes away from their sense because their relaxed and comfortable state of mind is almost too much so. Does that make any sense to you what I just said? It does. I mean, I'm from Southern California. So yes, we and I'm here in Florida. So we both know what we mean. It's <laughs> jeans, flip flops, shorts, tank tops, and so on. Yes. And even a lot of the, uh, Judy, a lot of the executives are dressing down because they want to be more part of the group and the people, their employees that they're working with. Speak to that a little bit about, about your take on that and why you feel they're doing that or and is it necessary? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> I think that it's a combination. So if an executive, so I've seen executives who come and they speak in a suit, but they are warm in their demeanor. They care about the human element by asking questions and seeking to understand and um, 
and speaking on the same level, it's okay if they're wearing a suit. And then I've seen people that are in more casual clothes and are um, more formal in their in their way of being. So it, yeah. that, that it doesn't connect. So it really, it's the whole package put together. But it does say something that if a person is wearing a suit, you, you, you assign a certain um, meaning to that. Yes. Yes. Definitely. The clothes make a big, big difference. That's why people like you are so important. It's the whole, it's the colors, it's the style, it's the, the fit. And it's for you. It's not a one size fits all. It's a one size fits each person. It needs 8 billion people. You know, I, I love the way you put that. And here's why, because what you just described, a word that I would use that today turns a lot of people off is formal. And uh -huh. formal, when you have on that business suit and that tie, or as for female, you're dressed to the nine, so to speak. Yet, if you're comfortable and your personality exudes a genuine compassion and caring, uh -huh. then it doesn't matter what you have on. It should matter, though, that you know how to pull yourself together where your whole presence is one that speaks your leadership capabilities and possibilities. Is that yeah. something that makes sense to you as well? Yes. And well, no. Right. And, and just a smile, smile, a real smile is yeah. like, and it doesn't have to be smiling all the time, but if an executive smiles when they're about to give a speech and shows with a tone of voice that they're in, a, they care. Yes. And, and that, that it conveys a caring person that's very responsible and knows what he's doing or she, what she's doing, he or she. I think you nailed it right there because you use that word that means it's it's more than it has meaning that's beyond epic and that's they care. Yeah. Because one of my favorite mentors, people will hear me say this over and over again, said Maya Angelou said that everyone wants to be seen, heard, and valued. Yes. So if they are able to convey that, then they're they're on their way to gaining a loyal employee. Tell us a little bit more about body language other than the exterior that we all pretty much are aware of or most of us tell us a little, tell us something else about body language that maybe more of us should be more cognizant of and about so great question so one of the things that when we were cavemen and we saw another caveman coming towards us yep. immediately the part of our brain that senses um danger would go on alert and say friend or foe is there a friend or a foe coming towards me and if we didn't see the other caveman's hands, there would be a little like danger, danger. What do they have in their hand? They might have a spear or a, a stone or something that they're gonna. So you wanna show your hands. Hands are your trust indicators. So when you, you know, they say, take your hands out of your pockets. And yes. like, show me your, show your hand. Show, so there are all these phrases that that and also gestures like at the handshake, the high five, the fist bump, it has to do with the hands. So hands are very important in terms of building trust and connection. And when you use meaningful hand gestures, it helps everyone around you um, understand and remember what you're saying much much more. The, the research shows that. Well, Judy, you know that's that's fascinating to me because I knew, and I by the way, I love hands. Yeah. And I knew that, but not in the context that you expressed it. Ah. I didn't know that it was so vital in your meeting and connecting with other people and showing the hands and not having the hands in the pocket. I, I love Judge Judy. And she's always telling them, take your hands out of your pocket. <laughs> Where are you going? So that, yes, yes. Do you like her too? Do you know her? Well, I'm my name's Judy. And so people. <laughs> so I mean, yes. Okay, that went by me. I meant to judge Judy show, which you know what I'm talking about. What Judy does that is not that is condescending is when she looks when she looks down her glasses, that's that's called the judge Judy in body language talk. And it's it can be seen as being condescending. Because oh. she's like she looks down her glasses. You know how she does well, that? I'm thinking, Judy, while you're saying that, are her glasses readers? Because, you know, I wear readers and I'm always looking over my glasses. But when I do this, I wear real glasses. I'm going to take a look at that because I hadn't noted that. That's a good point you're making. Watch mm. the, judge, the Judge Judy look and see how you feel when she does that. I so will. 
but yes. Um, so what the question? What was the question you asked? Well, about? I, you answered. You answered that question. Let's let's talk about posture because I'm a big one for posture. What about sloping shoulders and kind of too relaxed and too? What does that speak to? So the general rule is of thumb is when you contract and go inward, that's a lower power position. When you expand and get bigger, that's a higher power. And what's interesting is that there's a study done with congenitally blind athletes. And they found that congenitally blind athletes who won a race would raise their hands up like this, which means pride, you know, joy, expansiveness. And when they lost, they would go. They would go into a ball like this. Now, how did they know that that's how athletes react when you win or when you lose? It's something innate within us. So there is a connection between how we're feeling and how our, we're presenting ourselves in our body. And there's also reciprocal. So when you start opening up like this, you actually start feeling more powerful and more confident. When you close down like this, yeah. It's so this is the challenge with today's the today's environment. Yes. yes. Oh, I was getting there. You beat me to the yes, yes, yes. This is contracted low power body language. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You simply don't want to do that. When you're right before you go out and give a talk, right before you go on a date, right before you enter a room, that is, it feels, and if people see you, they see a contracted person, you know, like it says, it says something, right? It says a lot. And one of the things that, you know, well, you, you do know that I volunteer with these young trouble and distressed girls. And then I do a lot of reading and research on my own. What we find and we all are aware of now is that this younger generation with all of this marvelous wonderness that we have, they're losing that sense of connecting of communicating. And so the suicide rate is higher than ever. They're like this with this phone all the time, right? And they don't have a sense of statue and all of that. How do we go about making corrections there? That's a biggie. So that's a great question. There's a book called Reclaiming the Conversation and it's a, an MIT researcher who studied empathy in kids and teenagers. And she's found that the levels of empathy have gone down over the last decade yes. because of the use of these devices. So, so because people are not con connecting, she says even as a professor, her office hours are empty. She says everyone wants to communicate over over email and ask her questions. She says I'm I won't answer unless you come to my office hours. Yeah. She, exactly. Blowing me away. You know why? I'm old school and happy and proud to be. Right. I'm, uh, used, I'm used to the phone. Uh -huh. Even if it's a quick running late, can't be there. Everybody now, if especially millenniums, and I love them, nothing against them, right. really. If you don't text, you don't hear. <laughs> they don't answer the phone. They don't talk on the phone. And a lot of elders and mature people are doing the same. This phone, as wonderful as it is, as much as it's given us, Judy, it's taken away a lot. And in, in conjunction with the casualness of the society, we need to, those of us who are more mature and wise and hoping to have a legacy, we need to be more involved with our youth. We really do. So yeah. what what yeah. what do you what can you speak to when it comes to body language that would be a very powerful point to relay and give to a younger person outside of that phone? So, yeah, they, I mean, one thing is to take a hiatus from your phone for a few for a few hours mm -hmm. and to go out and just connect with people face to face. So I spoke to a group of college students up here in, um, in San Diego, in North San Diego, and just spoke to them about body language. And because they were starting to go out and interview for jobs and interview for grad school, and they're just they're they're not used to having face-to-face -face interaction. So my, what I'm encouraging them is to just put the phone down, <laughs> go to dinner with people and look, don't have your phone with you. Like put it away, leave it at home. Yeah. You don't, you don't need it. It's an, it's an addiction and we actually yeah. don't. Need it. 
Now you're speaking the language that we all pretty much know. It is an addiction. It's a mild addiction, but it still is an addiction. And when you mentioned about job interviews and going on job interviews, I did a workshop with the girls and, and they don't look you in the eye because they're th that sense of confidence. It's, it's, it's a bigger issue than many of us are allowing it or acknowledging that it is. It is. I, I love the, that population of teenagers into early, early 20s and working with them to, and I'm even teaching my nephews about body language. Yes. Uh, contact, yeah. Eye contact and how to do a handshake and what it is. Because I, they're eight and 10, you know, they're young. Yes. And how to regard and respect women themselves and then women and all of these, some of the old school stuff, it's gone. It's not coming back. Bravo, hooray, okay. But there's a lot that we still need. Yes. It's 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 up to us to to instill that. I want to get back to one more point because it's important to me and the work that I do, and there is a connection. And I want you to answer this. And if it's if it's not the answer I want, it's okay. So you're not shy. Do you think that this casual way of dressing? whether it's where you are in San Diego, California, or where I'm at, or anywhere where the weather is warm, do you think that that in some ways, if a person is still in the career work mode, takes away from their presence and their Wonder Woman stance and power, and men too, I know you deal with men as well. Do you think that that casual has gone to the extreme and somehow we need to get back to dressing, not formal, but being comfortable and finding our own sense of style? Does that make, any sense at all to you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I mean, you know, I talk about it starts with what is your personal brand? And so, like, is your brand that you are compassionate, intelligent, um, confident, and colorful? If that's your brand, and then you want to be able to meet people and have them think, Judy is 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 colorful, intelligent, compassionate, and wise, whatever. And so then I then I, I dress to be that way. I dress to be to reflect that brand. That's one way you can think of it in a very like like um, proactive, intentional way. I guess intentional. And also it it really depends on the environment. So if you're going to be yeah meeting sitting around a room and you're just wearing a wrinkled t-shirt i mean it do, you it doesn't say a lot about you you're saying i don't take a lot of care in how i look and how i present myself you're i mean i do it <laughs> i'm guilty of it no you don't <laughs> no you don't <laughs> but not, not all the time and i do it less and less because yeah. you know it's making an impression it's making a not a good impression no, no, no. And people, people overall, no matter what status or what, what level, where they're at, people want to not so much be led because more people are leaders more than they think they're not. Yet they want to be able to look to someone and have a sense of they have a lot of the answers that they want and they need and they're seeking and that not so much to look up to, I don't buy into that, but someone that they can stand next to and admire and have a high regard and respect for. And if you're not too well pulled together, then that's not going to work, I don't think. I mean, who do you, like, who are some female, um, female role models that have a sense of, like, I think of Meghan Markle, I think yeah. of Michelle Obama, yeah. I think, um, well put together and confident and pr ha having a sense of presence. And even when they're wearing, I have a good friend, Silvia Pellegrini, who's from Italy. Yes. And she, even if she's gonna go work out, she looks nice. She has an Italian style about her. She lives in Milan. She yes. lives in Milan, Italy. Oh, yeah. 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 Looks nice, whether she's going to work out or whether she's going to dinner. And it's a, and she's comfortable when she works out. She just, versus me, sometimes I just look not, not, I, I look schlumpy. <laughs> You're making me laugh. I love to laugh. <laughs> Invest in workout clothes. So I'm going and in investing in some 
nicer workout clothes and I'm spending a little more money and I feel more put together and I'm single. So maybe I'll meet a guy at the gym on the way in or on the way out or on the treadmill next to me. You never know, right? Well, now you're speaking my language because I believe that you can be casual, you can be comfortable and you can be elegant and sophisticated and well put together, pulled together, polished, whatever it is you're wearing, if you know how to do it. But we're getting off track here because we're going into my arena, which is yours too. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Good one to dance in, let me tell you. But tell us something else that most of us don't know about body language, about when you go and enter a room, like I'm sure you like me and so many of us in the audience, hi ladies, good to see you here, always welcome, that you can read a room. What are some of the signals that you get that will tell you about the person before they utter one word outside of their dress and their outfit, their appearance? So their posture, whether they're, whether they're contracted or expanded, yes. their facial expressions. Right. Um, whether there's a feeling of like active breathing and movement or whether it's like heavy air because people aren't breathing in and out. And there's also something called mirror neurons in our brain, which yes. means we can sense what it's con emotions are contagious basically. So we are picking up on other people's emotions all the time from these mirror neurons. It was a, discovery in neuroscience just in the last decade or so, mm -hmm. which it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it's it's incredible and explains so much. So that's why when you see good friends or um, a couple that looks in sync with each other, that's because they're mirror neurons. They are picking up on like what the other one is feeling. And like, it's it's going back and forth, it's reciprocal. So, so that's something that's going on like subconscious we don't even know what's happening so that's another reason we can feel what's going like you can feel an emotion it's pretty interesting it's subtle that's it's fascinating especially for those who are in relationship work i mean meeting that special person or that partner and all of that judy you have mentioned and i want you to make sure that you text me email me whatever works for you the two books that you mentioned this one the neurons the title of that book and also oh. the one about um uh, the young kids, I don't remember the name, somehow revealing. I will do that. Let me show you. Okay. Because those are the two books that, but I'm a voracious reader. Um, what is that? Reclaiming Conversations. That's the one I want. Yes. Text me the name and the title of that book, even though it'll be here. And yeah. the other one about that you just mentioned. And mm -hmm. then I will read because I, I love to read. It's, it's how I keep my sanity, really, especially during these times. So that's important to know and are, is there anything else we have three major things that we look for when we walk into and read a word you've given the two really major ones the posture mm -hmm. and the silent expressions on the face yes. yeah. um so how much movement are, is there movement going on um th there are other things that you can that we talk about in body language and it's haptics haptics is touch so are people touching each other and when you touch someone, it creates oxytocin, and oxytocin is the cuddle hormone. So you can actually um, create connection by touching. Uh -huh. And space, the use of space. So if you see people that are closer together, that's more intimacy. That's more intimacy, Whether whereas if you see people further apart and going more further apart, that's a distancing and a lack like the opposite of intimacy, it's a distancing. So space and touch are two other aspects of body language that you wouldn't necessarily think about, but they're very important to um, uh, deter, like um, intending on how you wanna present yourself and, and, understand, and also understanding what's going on with other people. Sure. And, and managing that relationship. I get that, I get that. I have one more question for you and then we, we'll wrap this up. For me, posture is important. And I look to how ladies, women, females, not always ladies, how they sit. Yeah. Because men sit and they go boom, boom, boom. And now because of this relaxed, casual kind of way, what does that say in body language when women sit and that the way that they're sitting 
is not maybe as ladylike and feminine as it should be. Because we're talking now, I'm speaking to you a little bit about femininity and sexuality. Posture in your sit sitting. How does that play with you? So it's a little bit more, so the expansive, males show more of the expansive um, body posture. Yeah. That's more of an alpha. A man yeah. will put his arm over the, uh, the other, you know, the couch or the other person's chair. That's taking, that's a confidence, a little bit of a power move. They might, yeah. they might cross their leg over the other leg like this. It's called the alpha cross. Yes. That's more alpha power move. Right? That's what I was thinking, power move, yes. And so women, it, it depends on the impression you want to make. And it's also in the environment you're in. So um, it depends on the environment. And the, but if you want to be, you, you don't want to be tuck, like tight up in a ball. But if you <laughs> want to be a little bit alluring to a man, you can show the, so there's a lot, it depends on the environment. If you're in a professional environment, you don't want to be a sexual, like trying to be sexually alluring. Appealing, alluring. You're in a um, a singles event. You, there's certain things that women do and can do to elicit a response from a man. One of them is to touch her hair. Now, touching your hair is is it's called um, what's the word? <laughs> I forget the word preening. Preening behavior is is showing men. And then we did this when we were cavemen. It's showing men that we were fertile because our hair is healthy and we're available. And we're available. The other thing is we'll touch our our neck like this to release pheromones. And the pheromones tell a man, "Hey, I'm available. Come come get me." We'll also show the the softness of the jaw, which is a feminine trait versus the man's more square jaw with a beard or with a with the so the softness of the of the of the chin and the jaw is is a feminine trait and what and does it, it show what does it say that you're lady like that you're a woman and that you're like available sort of you know the you know the <laughs> i love this you know why marilyn monroe, the marilyn monroe like she does the look with her eyes she's like she's like this and she has the the chin showing and she's showing off her neck she's showing her chin softness and she's using that allure with her eyes so there's so there's different things you can do and it's based in our ancestry like what we did when we when we we're trying to attract a mate it was a survival mechanism yes yes yes, yes. oh my god judy is so fascinating i'm laughing and i'm chuckling here because I do this pretty much all the time. I have a mate and the best husband in the world, so I'm not looking for anybody, but I do this. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It might be a habit, or you might be, you might be, uh, are you doing it in front of your husband? Yes, and sometimes when I'm out, I might just go like this. If I'm I'm tuned into someone and maybe listening to a speech or a conversation, maybe and then I, I might find that I'm sitting like this and I might go like so, and so I thought it was more questioning what they're saying and what they're about. But so one thing yeah. could be this is um, like a like a thinking thinking thing. But there's also co something called self soothing when you're touching your face that can look like you're nervous or touching or rubbing rubbing and um, and cracking knuckles or blocking your face. That can be like a self soothing gesture that that, yeah. um, that you can do subconsciously when you're nervous. But this it might just be a habit that you do. It could just be a habit. You know, usually when I'm, so I can, I can just, this is like a stance that's comfortable for me. Like, so, yeah. and I might go like, so, and, and my way of thinking and seeing it was that I'm really tuned in and I don't know if I'm quite agreeing with what's being said. Well, so. the, the thing that you just did was you leaned in. Yes. With those, um, a curiosity and, <laughs> and an engagement. So the leaning, the leaning in is part of the using of space effectively. Leaning in when you're speaking, you could sh it shows engagement, or you're seeking agreement, or you're look and and tipping your ear could say I'm listening. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things that might be going on. Oh my God, we could go here all night long. It just never <laughs> ends. There's just so much of this, and I have two great books to look into and put on the post. Judy, you and I could talk for the next hour or two. That's a given.
<laughs> is there anything that I didn't ask you, or is there anything that you want to ask us or the audience, or for, especially for those who come for the replay, or something that you want to leave us with? Whatever uh, it is, let us know. I do. So what I would leave you with is to just be yourself and and know and be congruent. So what you're feeling on the inside is reflected on the outside. And you want to be congruent so that, because if people, like if you say, I am so happy to be here. Do you believe my words or do you believe my body language? So you're gonna always believe the body language, the nonverbals. So you wanna make sure that there's a congruence between what you're feeling, what you're saying, and how you're showing up. So that's what I would leave with people is, is to be congruent and to, and to be yourself, to be your best self. Your best self, oh, we all love that. I don't think there's a better way to end it. And I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Really, the time flies, but you've given us beyond immeasurable information and I'm grateful. Judy, I'm gonna say so long for now and put you to the side. I'm gonna say so long to the audience and I'll be back with you in just a second. All righty, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, bye. bye. Well, body language. It's a never ending conversation. There's so much more involved Judy shared with us a lot of really good vital information that we can all benefit and use. And there's so much more. And she gave us two great books to look into. The whole intention here is to have people share with you what they're doing, why they're doing and how they love it so much and why they love it. So that whatever is in you percolating can begin to bubble up and boil over because we're all here to master our skills, our gifts, our talents, and then to share them with others. And that's what we do here. So need I say to you, when you show up, my Roz, always good to see you. All of you who show up now and for the replay, we're grateful. We thank you, thank you, thank you. And whatever you're doing, make sure if you didn't get here for the original live broadcast that you'll watch the replay and leave us your comments. We love to hear what you're thinking and why this was valuable to you because we know that it is. Have a good weekend, enjoy the week, the rest of the week, and remember to take care of you first. Do the very best that you can because only then are you able to look after others. And again, thanks for being here. We'll see you again next week, same time, same station. So long for now, cheers. <laughs>